always like to thank Pastor Gaines for giving me the opportunity to do the inspirational message. And uh, this morning, and thank all of y'all for coming out too. This morning, my message is entitled, Love for Others. And uh, my supported scripture is coming from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And it reads, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Please bow your heads. Dear God, help us to see that we are your love letters to a world desperate to be loved. We ask that you would show us that each one of our stories is valuable to your kingdom and that you want to use us, dear God, to spread your love to the ends of the earth. Lord, you have written the gospel love story on the tablets of our hearts. And it is a story that needs to be shared. We pray for courage and conviction to share our personal love letter with others. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. It is very interesting that God created some animals to be mostly loners. And examples of those animals are bears, koalas, and sea turtles. Sometimes a solitary life seems appealing, doesn't it? And wouldn't it be a peaceful existence to just do your own thing? And without answering to anyone or anybody or dealing with anyone. No cooperation or no communication required. But yet, what a lonely life that would be. God made solitary animals in their unique ways, but he created humans entirely different. He created people in his image to be more like him. And that's exactly why people do have love for each other. We love because he first loved us. It's as simple and profound and beautiful as that. God is love itself is the whole chapter of 1 John uh, chapter 4 explains. Apart from him, it's impossible to know what real love is. And because he created us and showed his love for us, especially through the sacrifice of his son Jesus, People are consequently wired to want to imitate him in sharing love and being part of loving relationships with others. Now, faith, hope, and love are virtually important virtues for Christians. Without them, there is no Christian life. They're, they are fundamental to our walk with God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yet, the Bible promises that one of these virtues stand out more than the others. And without it, the others are empty. And that virtue is love. 
Love is the greatest virtue of all. And as a Christian, we must cling to it and constantly convey that to people around us. And you may ask why. And I would say it's because as the first part of 1 Corinthians 13 explains, love is what gives our words weight, our life significance, and our motives meaning. Anything said or accomplished without love is absolutely worthless. In John chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus said, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Cultivating and sharing faith and hope certainly are important, but love is the greatest and most essential virtue for pointing others to Jesus and encouraging them to surrender their lives and follow him. Christians must cultivate and share it above all. There is no greater goal than to win others over to Jesus with our love. The world pretends to know what real love is. Secular culture has all kinds of ideas, some harmless, some not far off the mark, and some that are deceiving and dangerous. The basic reason humans are even looking for love is because God himself is love and he instituted it among them when he created them in his image. Now authentic love is simply impossible to know without first knowing who God is and how he demonstrates his love to us. It's described so well in the following passage. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. And since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love one another. God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. Telling children that they are loved, but never playing with them or providing for them proves those loving words empty. And it gives them false, a false idea about love. The same kind of thing goes on for, goes for relationships with spouses. It goes for extended families. And it also goes for friends. Loving words in relationships are nice, of course, but they are hollow if not accompanied by action. Real love is active. Real love is sacrificial. Christians who tell the world that they love others without actively helping them, their brothers and sisters, 
um, who are in need, it also gives us a false idea of the love of the Savior. Jesus gave up his very life, and he calls his people to sacrifice in order to lovingly meet others' needs as well. 1 John chapter 3 says, Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Christians don't need instructions from other people on how to love. When God himself is the very best teacher, he's the best teacher of love, that is. He is love itself, after all. And all we have to do is simply ask God for his help to love others. Now, a question do you have people in your life who are difficult to deal with, yet God is calling you to show kindness and compassion to that person or those people? We don't have to take the time to read uh, a pile of books on how to treat others. All we have to do is simply ask God himself day by day, sometimes moment by moment, to show us how to act and what to do for others and to give us opportunities and the right words to say, to share his love and point others to him. In Philippians chapter two, verse 13, it promises that God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Loving others means sacrificing your own desires in order to help meet their needs. And it doesn't matter whatever trials we are suffering with, we should be willing to help. Just like Christ sacrificed to meet the world's greatest needs and thus save mankind from sin. Thankfully, God does not expect this kind of sacrificial love from our own ability. He urges his people to depend on him for endless power and strength. So trusting in your Savior, go and boldly share his love, knowing that one day soon we can confidently stand before the one true God. So let us show love to someone today. I'm going to end my message with that, but I, I had something else in mind. And it, it came to mind about several weeks ago, we lost um, two church members that I know of. And everybody... I mean, a lot of people were asking me, do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? I said, no, the name sounds familiar. But the reason we don't know is because on Sunday, right after church is over, we are out the door. We never take the time to move from this side to over here to go and you see people every Sunday, but you don't know them. So we need to make a point. We need to, you know, bring ourselves over to the other side. Stay a little while longer. Go introduce yourself to someone. 
you know, you know the face, but you don't know the name. And, and it, it's, it's kind of like, it's hurtful when, you know, you're in the church and, and you don't know your, and of course we have a large group of people. I'm not expecting everybody to know everyone, but we need to show love to others. We got to get out of our comfort zone. And, and we do need to take the time every Sunday, go walk to the other side. And, you know, introduce yourself to someone. And uh, as I said, let us show love to someone today. That's my message to you today. Thank you. loving those on the outside, but loving those that are in here also. And she'll never do that. She do love. All about love. Anybody here? Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for another day that you've given us, Father. And Father, I pray right now, Father, that every heart, every individual in here, Father, would reflect on you and your son, Jesus the love that you have showed us, Father. You didn't have to do it, Father, but you loved us so much that you gave your only son to us. Help us to reflect all this month, Father, the love that you have poured out to us, Father, that we can pour out to those who are less fortunate, Father. Help us not to, to get tied up into the shopping, the, the running here and there, the party, Father, but just stay focused on you, Father. We thank you, Father, you've done in our lives and done all that you're doing in our lives, Father. Just continue to touch our hearts, Father, through your word, Father. Help us to, to discipline ourselves to where we can read more of your word, Father, and pray to you and talk to you, Father, that we may be able to reflect your character in everything that we do. Let it bring glory to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Disciples.